Good morning, it's Daniel. And Jenny. And Talia. And we are back at Disneyland for another rope drop strategy challenge. Today we are rope dropping Toontown. We've never actually done this before, so we'll see how it goes, but we're gonna start with Runaway Railway and then take it from there. So, should be fun? Let's go. As we make our way up Main Street, let's show you real quick how we got here and some tips and tricks for parking and arrival at the Disneyland Resort. It's about 6.54 right now, and we just pulled up into the Mickey and Friends parking structure. The parking areas open one hour before the parks open, which means that they open at 7 a.m., so we've got a few minutes to wait, but we're not too far back in the line. We're probably car number, I'd say, eight, nine, somewhere around there. And uh, getting here early is essential to having a successful rope drop strategy, so we've made it with plenty of time to spare, and we'll be able to get on a tram and head on to the uh, entrance plaza pretty quickly. It's really important to arrive early if you are planning on rope dropping because the later that you arrive at the parking structure, the longer it's going to take to actually pay for your parking, park in a spot, and get on the tram and into the parks. So make sure you leave yourself enough time in the morning to get from the parking structure to the parks themselves. It's now 7.15 and we have made it down the escalators from the Pixar Pal side of the parking structure. And as you can see, there really isn't a line for security. So getting here early really does help out with that so that you can clear security quickly, get on a tram, and head up to the entrance plaza. We just made it on a tram. It's 7.20. We're heading up to the entrance plaza, and the trams are not very crowded right now. So getting here early, again, is key because, as you can see behind us, there's not a whole lot of people. And as you can see in front of us, we're the only people in this particular car. It is now 7.25. We got off the tram. We're heading to the entrance plaza to the turnstiles. And this is the first time we've come at Rope Drop for this series of videos where the entrance wasn't open and relatively clear. So it's gonna take us a few minutes to get through, but that's all right, we still got plenty of time till Rope Drop. Make sure you don't go to the first turnstiles here on the far left. They tend to have much longer lines because they're a little further back than the rest of them. We suggest going to the middle or even the far end from the tram loading area. And we finally scanned in at 7.34, still plenty of time to make it down Main Street. And uh, now back to you, future Daniel and Jenny and Talia. Thanks, Daniel, from 10 minutes ago. If you are a Disneyland hotel guest, you get 30 minute early entry into certain lands within Disneyland. So make sure you follow these signs to go to the right place that you don't have to wait with the rest of the rope drop crowd. As a reminder, here's where you wanna stand depending on where you're trying to go first at rope drop. So if you're trying to head towards Indiana Jones first, you wanna stand by the entry over here to Adventureland. If you're trying to go to Rise of the Resistance, you want to stand in this group right by the entrance to Frontierland. This will take you to the middle of the three entrances to Galaxy's Edge, which is the best place to go to get into the line for Rise of the Resistance. If you're trying to go to Fantasyland, there's three places people like to stand. One is right here, as close to the partner statue as possible, so you can go through the castle. Another spot you can stand is here in the center, so you can walk past the partner statue or you can stand as close as possible to the partner's statue on this side of the main hub. If you're trying to go to Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, you'll also want to stand over here and you will go up the parade route by the Matterhorn to Toontown. And lastly, if you're trying to head towards Tomorrowland or Space Mountain, you want to wait on this side as close to Tomorrowland as you can get. We have found our spot on the Tomorrowland side of the partner statue, and we will go head up the parade route to Toontown as soon as they let us in. I think strategy-wise, like we talked about, we're gonna do Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway first, and then after that, probably the Gadget Coaster, and then Roger Rabbit, and then we're also gonna be including the Matterhorn and It's a Small World in this challenge for today just because they're the closest things to Toontown and they are a little bit separate from some of the other areas so they almost feel like their own little mini land. One thing to note is that the Gadget Coaster is probably the least efficient ride at Disneyland so we'll see how that goes. If it starts getting busy then that can really slow you down so that's actually something that you may want to consider going on even before Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway but we're not going to do it in that order we're going to see how this goes because we like we said, haven't rope dropped Toontown before. Here we go. It's busy, but they just let us in, and there's a lot of people going everywhere. Tons of people going through the castle to go to Fantasyland. Tons of people going over here by the Matterhorn towards Toontown, or maybe Alice. Coming this way to Alice would be a pretty good strategy. There really isn't much of a line for it right now. 
And same thing with Matterhorn. Matterhorn would be a very good rope drop attraction, but we've noticed in the past that it tends to not get so crowded for the first hour, hour and a half of the park's opening, so we think it's better to come back to it. And actually, as an added bonus, it looks like today it hasn't opened yet, so that would actually be a bad choice for today, but in general, it's usually not a bad choice. In case you're wondering, it is now 8.03 as we enter Toontown, so that's about how long it takes to walk here from the main hub at park opening at Rope Drop. And now that we've entered Toontown, we are getting in line for Runaway Railway at 8.04. The line actually has sort of stopped by the Toontown fountain, but don't be alarmed if you see that. It's just because they haven't opened up all of the switchbacks inside of the queue yet. We should still move through pretty quickly. There shouldn't be too many people here in front of us. And if you haven't been able to check out the new queue here at Disneyland, be sure to click on the link below. As we walk through the queue, just want to show you that the app does currently say that it has a 15 minute wait. And I don't think we'll even wait that long. We're just kind of waiting as people look at the different queue decorations. We're being led into the pre-show theater at 8.13, so that wasn't a long wait at all for that. And while that's technically not the ride boarding, this is still pretty good timing, and this kind of feels like you're starting the attraction. Excuse me, you lady. Oh. Who, me? Do you know I help these good people in the car too want to fix this here Loki motive? We have boarded at 8.18. Here we go on Runaway Railway. Now that we're off of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, we're gonna go on Chippendale's Gadget Coaster. Hopefully that doesn't have too long of a line. I will say, I actually just checked the app and it shows that Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway still has a 15 minute wait. So maybe this isn't as popular of a rope drop destination now that it's been open for a few months. But I still think that's a good strategy. Come here first, go on that, and then do other things. Get the back of the park out of the way. It is 8.25 and we just got in line for Chippendale's Gadget Coaster. It lists a five minute wait, but it looks like we should walk right onto it. Oh boy, Chipper, couldn't you just do this forever? <laughs> we made it on at 8.29, so walked right on. No wait at all, here we go. Track, check. Vehicles, check. Seats, check. Chipper data, on, check. Here we go getting in line for Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin. It shows a five minute wait and it is 8.33. If you've never been on this before, this ride has one of the most amazing cues. It's very intricate and detail oriented and it has one of the best air conditioned spots in the park. But the queue inside is quite long and it's hard at times to tell how long the line really is because you can't see it at all from the outside unless it's extended out past the entrance. One of the nice things though about coming here early in the morning at Rope Drop is that at least if you are waiting in the lines, there usually aren't very many people returning with lightning lane return times, especially on rides like Roger Rabbit. So even if it seems a little bit long, you're not having to mix in with lightning lane guests. We got on Roger Rabbit at 8.41, here we go. It's now 8.45, we are all done with Toontown. That's great timing. That's an average of 15 minutes per ride and that includes us walking around to each of them and walking from the main hub into Toontown. We were gonna make our way towards Matterhorn, but it looks like it just temporarily closed. So we will do Small World and hope that Matterhorn is back up when we're done. As you can see here, the ride times are still really short for everything back here, except for Runaway Railway, which has gone up to 30 minutes, but that's not bad at all. That's still something that I would be willing to wait in. As you can see, coming here at Rope Drop really is the best strategy because the lines stay short for quite a while. It's now 8.47 and we're getting in line for It's a Small World. We would recommend going on Matterhorn first if it were open. And Small World lists a five minute wait. It's 8.48, here we go getting on It's a Small World. It 
It is 9.06. We just got off of It's a Small World and Matterhorn is still listing that it's closed and the park is starting to get quite busy. Uh, let's pull up the wait times right now and show you what that looks like. As you can see at the back of the park at Toontown, the lines have gotten quite a bit longer even in the last 20 minutes since we last checked in with you on that. But you can see that getting here early at Rope Drop really is a strategy that pays off for getting on everything as quickly as possible in the morning. Keep in mind, if you are coming later and you don't want to stay in line, you can purchase an individual lightning lane for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. And that is a separate purchase on Genie Plus. That is an individual lightning lane just for that attraction and it is per person. The price changes daily. Roger Rabbit's Cartoon Spin also is included with your Genie Plus lightning lane for the day. So that is included with all of the other lightning lane available attractions throughout the park. However, Chippendale's Gadget Coaster does not have any lightning lane options. For the rest of the park, just want to show you some other things. So Fantasyland is still relatively short for most things. The longest waits there are Peter Pan at 25 and Alice in Wonderland at 20. Going over towards Adventureland and Frontierland, we noticed when we got here that they seemed to be doing some emergency repair work and Adventureland was closed when we lined up for rope drop. So the Tiki Room and Jungle Cruise and Indiana Jones are all closed and don't appear to have opened at all today. Big Thunder Mountain is currently closed. And then moving further west, you can see that uh, there's still relatively short waits for most of the stuff back there, except for Haunted Mansion has already gone up to 30 minutes. So again, that rope drop hour is so huge and so important if you really want to maximize your day here at Disneyland. And we think that we've shown in our rope drop challenge videos that picking one land in the park and really focusing on that land when you rope drop instead of zigzagging all around the park is the way to maximize your time and get in as many rides as possible during that first hour. When we walked by Matterhorn at Rope Drop, it hadn't opened yet and we could see that they weren't quite ready to open, but it did open when we checked the app while we were in Toontown and then obviously had some issue and closed temporarily. So we're gonna see if maybe we can get on that quickly if it looks like they're about to reopen it. If not, then we will go on another ride or two and then come back to Matterhorn. Hi, it's us from the future. It's about 9.50 right now and the Matterhorn's been down now for 45 minutes or so and doesn't show any signs of reopening. So we tried to wait it out by going on a few things in Fantasyland and hoping that it would reopen, but that's not the case. So let's send you back to the past where we wrap up this video without going on Matterhorn. Hopefully you can see that this is a really helpful strategy and hopefully this video did help you out so if it did please give us a big thumbs up we really appreciate it be sure to subscribe for even more magical content and we hope we put you in a magical mode